This is Glasgow Rangers Nation. Guys, you are all very welcome indeed. I'm your host, Owen James, and this is all your latest Rangers news. Well, we've made it. We've got to Sunday. Another week is over. Another crazy week in the world of Rangers. Just another madcap 24-7, rolling news, rumbling on. <laughs> crazy week. One day, one day soon, hopefully, we'll have a nice quiet week where, you know what, the club just goes along nice and normally, wins football games, no drama, no arguments, no falling out. Yeah, that's not going to happen, is it? It's just not going to happen. It's just never going to happen. Um, yeah, so we've had, a, you know, we've had a pretty crazy week, haven't we? It's all obviously, you know, ended very happily. We'll talk, that's what the video is going to be about mainly. We're going to talk about the positive, to accentuate the positive of today's win. Look at the positive performances of certain individuals. Try and stay away from the bad ones. Um, look, I don't want to particularly talk about Dave King. I don't want to talk about the boardrooms, bubbles. I don't want to talk about the Park family. I don't want to talk about John Ben. I don't want to talk about all that. What I want to talk to you about today about is about the footballing side of the club, about what happening is happening on the pitch, and what we are seeing on the pitch, especially obviously in yesterday's three nil victory over Dundee. A pretty routine game. They weren't brilliant, Rangers. They weren't terrible. They did the job. They played well. They played. A good game. I think that's what we need to do. I think, you know, there are probably some more gears we could have gone through if we actually needed them. But I don't think we actually need to go to the very, you know, top gear into sixth gear or turbo gear or, in, you know, we need to press the NOS button to fly away. We just kind of, you know, did what we need to do to get through the game. And that's kind of where we're at. You know, I think, you know, that good game management. That's what you need to do against these lesser clubs like Dundee. Um, yeah, I know going in, Dundee can be tricky at Dens Park, not so much at Ibrox. You know, like I said on the video yesterday, it's been a long time since they won that game at Ibrox. Long time since they got any sort of result against us. So, look, at the end of the day, it is what we expected, wasn't it? Um, you know, I think looked at the team selection. I think, well, one or two arguments there with the team selection. Of course, there were. I mean, this was the team that was selected. Uh, Jack Butland in goal, James Tavernier right back, captain. I think I've said my big piece on this. I think, you know what, I think Philippe Clement is a bit of a liar. I think, you know, he said that James Tavernier can't play every minute of every single game and he can't play um, every game. But I think he's kind of going against himself a little bit on that. And James Tavernier has played every single game this season, um, despite the fact that the manager said he can't. At his age, I think the manager was he's making himself look a bit of a liar there. Uh, Suter, Proper, Hefte, Baron, Sterling. Surprisingly coming in for, uh, for Diamande, although Dia didn't have the best of games last time out. Uh, Tom Lawrence, uh, Cheney back from his sickness, Bayrami and Dessas. Um, you know, the two sort, I mean, like I said, I know the Tavernier thing. I don't particularly want to talk about that today. Um, I just can't be arsed with arguing with, with the Tav fanboys. Um, you know, I think, you know, looking at that team, though, look, looking at that actual team, there was a couple of things that I didn't like about the team. There's a couple of, there's a fair few things I did like about the team. Um, you know, I think Suter and Proper do seem to be the, you know, the central defensive partnership that he favours. And one of the positives for me with the central defensive partnership is not messing it around, not rotating it, not changing it. I think that is the best way because... Look, you look at dominant teams, you look at top teams all around the world, you look at top teams over history. They've had a central defensive pairing that stayed together, that hasn't been messed around, that hasn't been split up. And it's kind of been able to develop a relationship there at the back. And it does seem that Suter and Proper are his favoured partnership. Hefte, please, with that, Hefte, I want to talk about him in this video, so I'm not going to go too much into him. Baron, yeah, great. Uh, Cheney, nice to see him back. Bayrami, good to see him in the team. My dispute there would be, why are we not starting Cortez? Why are we starting Lawrence in the 10 and Bayrami, who is, I know he can play wide left, but his primary position is 10. Yes, that's right. His primary position is 10. Yes, I know he can play left wing before some smart ass comes in the comments and say, he's a left winger as well. Yes, I know he is, but primarily he's a 10. So I would have liked to see him in the 10 role, although I thought he was very effective today indeed. Um, and plus, Tom Lawrence was shit again today. <laughs> Um, and I don't think Lawrence was as great as everyone made him out to be against Dundee United. So I do think that that was a bit of a red herring there. Good to see Cheney back, obviously, from his sickness. Um, Dessa's led the line. I would like to see an egg man up there. 
to be perfectly honest with you, I know Des has got his couple of goals, but uh, I would have still liked to have seen Igman up there starting. But, you know, overall, positive team, good team. A couple of cheer changes could have made it a really super team. I think there is an embryonic starting of a decent starting lineup there. I think, you know, if you... I mean, Sterling really struggled today yet again in central midfield. I mean, he struggled against Celtic last, you know, a couple of weeks ago. He struggled again today. I think perhaps proving that the lads are right back and should be playing right back for the club rather than in central defensive midfield. Maybe. I mean, I'm not, no, I'm not Einstein, but, you know, that's what I'm kind of thinking. Uh, but, you know, Baron Dio there. Um, moved by Rami to the 10 roll in place of Tom Lawrence, put Cortez on the wing. And I think you've got a very nice uh, starting uh, line up there. A team that uh, can go on to, to you know, to, to do very well in the league, at least, you know, get to second. Um, obviously, taking on Celtic's another matter. Um, and, you know, perhaps even have a bit of a go in the Europa League as well. So positives there. Lots of positives there. Uh, bench looked good as again. Kelly, I thought. Cortez, yeah. Dio, yes. Dowell. I would like to see Bailey Rice in place of Kieran Dowell. I'm not a Kieran Dowell fan. Big Cass, who got on got on today. Balligan, love Balligan. Igman, yeah. Raskin, McCausen. Positive, strong bench with impact coming from it. So I think there was a lot of positives there on the bench. Now, look, three goals, three good goals. I mean, it was the first one. Odessa shot. It's saved. It goes back out. Tap, tap, drills it in. Um, the Tav fanboys go crazy and Dessa scores. Uh, the second goal was a penalty. You know, I think it's a it's a penalty. We probably should have had another one in the first half. I mean, let's face it, another Tim Plosion is about to happen. Rangers go back to Ibrock. The penalty to Rangers is uttered again. And realistically, we should have had two. Uh, James Tavernier steps up and takes the penalty, scores. I would have really liked to have seen Samuel Dessas or someone else take that penalty, especially for Dessas. He could have got his hat trick today if he'd been allowed to take that penalty. Um, I do think we should take the penalties off Tav, if I'm being honest. A uh, bit sick of seeing him take them. Um, and also, a third goal, an excellent goal, excellent combination, and an excellent finish by Dessas to get us the third. But, I mean, the, the players that stood out for me today, the two players that stood out for me today, the, the, the top two players, the players who I had... Neck and neck for man of the match. I picked one over the other. Um, I want to talk about two players in particular who really stood out today. Um, and those two players were the best two players on the park by a street. Were Hefte. I thought Hefte was absolutely superb today. Absolutely fantastic. And Connor Barron. I thought he absolutely controlled the game, controlled the game, used the ball so well. Just played a very, very good game indeed. Now, like I said, for me, Hefte, you know, David Edgar, I know, agree with that as well. I thought was man of the match. I thought he was absolutely brilliant today yet again. And it's really, really encouraging. I think, you know, if we go back and we look at, um, you know, kind of that, that pre-season and we looked at him and we kind of worried that, you know, that his, his defensive side of his game was a little bit weak and we were a bit worried for him for that aspect. Well, I think we can kind of allay those fears now. Yes, I know it's just Dundee. Uh, but anyway, even in Celtic, I thought Hefte had, had a decent game. Um, you know, he, he looks more and more impressive. He was solid in defense. In defense. Um, he was excellent going forward. You know, he's kind of like the all-round modern fullback, isn't he? But, you know, he, he's, he's more you know, what you need in a fullback, because not only is he good going forward, he can put a ball in the box, he can go past his man, um, you know, he can do all the things a modern fullback needs to do. And you know, people have talked about modern fullbacks have been more attacking and perhaps the defensive side not been as important as it used to be. I mean, more the tab apologists that have been coming out of that crap. But, you know, Hefte does that side of the game very, very well. You know, he, he can also defend as well. He looks solid in defence and, you know, he's certainly someone who doesn't take, uh, doesn't mess around, and doesn't uh, suffer fools gladly, will get stuck in when he needs to. I think, you know, maybe a little bit irresponsible from that aspect. But uh, overall, you know, I thought Hefte today was absolutely fantastic. I thought he played very, very well indeed. Um Top player on the pitch by a mile. Um, and, you know, like a number of outlets have seen, a number of people who've reviewed the game today have said, I think, you know, he's a player who's getting better game by game by game. I mean, he showed a great, he showed a great link up with Nedim Bairami. Um, I do hope, though, that Clemon is not going to persist playing Bairami on the left. I hope he's not going to Fabio Silva him. 
and waste him. I think I hope that he's going to play in, in the 10 role and, and push, get rid of Lawrence and push Cortez back out there. That's got to be the hope going forward. But I thought, you know, the that the Hefte and Bayrami link really, really well today. Some lovely combination play. And I think that's something we did see elements of, um, you know, from him and Cortez as well. So, you know, all very positive on that left-hand side. And I think, you know, it's really good that we've got now a really good attacking, functioning left side with Cortez and Bayrami there. And obviously as well with uh, Hefte, you know, we could have had a real crisis on that left-hand side and missed Abdallah Seema, but it seems that we've overcome those difficulties exceptionally well. So Hefte for me, absolute gold star for him today. Uh, the other one, Connor Barron, I've just got to say, you know, this is a, a lad who is just absolutely fantastic. He just is absolutely fantastic. You know, such a young lad, and yet he plays with such experience, such assurance. You know, he's always wanting the ball. He's always offering for the ball. And when he gets the ball, he, he's not that with it. He doesn't waste it. He uses it positively. As I've said on a number of videos now, you look at Conor Barron, and what's Conor Barron's first, you know, option? Who can I put the ball forward to? Where can I play the ball forward into an attacking zone to? How can I get an attack going from here? You know, people have talked about the fact that we haven't got a six. And yes, I don't think we've got a six in a long time. I don't think Baron is a six. And But but he's doing a great job there. He's doing a fantastic job there. And, he, and he's 10 times the player that John Lundstrom was last season. You know, he's just quality. And I thought today he absolutely strolled it. He absolutely dominated that midfield and helped us to wrestle control of that midfield today. And, uh, you know, I thought he was excellent. I thought he was absolutely excellent. And I think he is someone who's come in you know, as a young player and, and yes, has room for development. And that's just frightening, isn't it, really, when you think about it? The fact that the kid can only get better, hopefully, you know, something that's going to be coached into him. is just all very positive with him. And, you know, we've got a lot of young players now at the club, you know, Hamza Igman, Kassin Weirjo, um, Cortez, uh, Baron, Hefte, Robbie Fraser. We've got a lot of young lads coming through. And I think that's all very positive. And these are players that we can knock the rough edges off and turn into top, top players. And I think... Connor Barron is certainly someone who I think will go on to have great success in the game. And, you know, perhaps two, three years down the line, he's going to be someone we're flogging for over 20 million to one of the EPL clubs. I mean, he is that good, I think. Um, his ball use is excellent. His tackling is good. He gets stuck in. He harasses everyone. He gets in faces. He, he doesn't let people settle a minute. And again, we saw another commanding performance for Connor Barron. So, look, for me, no dispute, no argument. Your man of the match has got to be the Baron or Hefte. Both of them absolutely superb today. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant today. So encouraging to watch as well. And just a pleasure to watch. I mean, that's one of the things you kind of... You sit there a lot with Rangers, don't you? And you, and you watch games, you know, say, come on, oh, come on. Hurry. Oh, my Jesus, do something. And yet you watch lads like Hefte and you watch lads like Baron and you're just encouraged, really positively encouraged by them. And I don't want to sit here and discuss bad performances or who didn't play great or who misplaced passes or, you know, a 90-minute performance or whatever. I want to discuss the positive, but if it's a victory, it's a victory. It's a 3-0 victory. It's a convincing victory. It gets us through to the semi-final. Job done. Up the road. On we go. Uh, next game up. Next up, Malmo. And yeah, that's what we've got to be looking at now. You know, how can we take this performance on today? How can we take on this development of this performance? And I thought, I think, you know, you, you saw today a little bit of an embryo, a little bit of a, a start of something today that, that hopefully, you know, and I, yes, I get that it was only Dundee we were playing, but it's something we've really got to look at. Um, so 5.45 kickoff on uh, Thursday um, against Malmo away. And then obviously on Sunday the 29th, it is at 12 o'clock against Hibs. Um, got, so, you know, look, two games that are eminently winnable, two games that, you know, that we've got to get a win out of. And I talked, didn't I, on, a, on that podcast I did a few weeks ago about four wins or bust. And it looks like we could, you know, we're two out of two now. Can we make it four out of four that has got to be the aspiration going forward. Look, guys, let me know. Who's your man of the match? Who are you impressed with? What impressed you today, so yesterday, in the game? And, you know, what are you looking forward to about Thursday in the Europa League in Malmo? Thanks for watching, Glasgow Raiders Nation, guys. As always, please smash that sub, ring that notification bell, drop a comment. It all helps, please. And remember, never forget, we are the people.